morning. Welcome to Redemption Church.、Uh, we're mixing it up around here. We're、yeah. mixing it up. We slid across the room over to the couch. We're wild guys. What can I say? <laughs> It's getting crazy around here. Honestly, there is really nowhere else in the house to film because everywhere else is just a mess. So we, <laughs> so we had two choices. Just tighten that frame up. <laughs> Celebrate、uh, the beginning of summer, Memorial Day weekend. Yep. We got a fun worship service planned for you guys. We're really excited.、Um, we have a huge announcement to celebrate as we kick it off, and that is that Erica Nargisian, our kids ministry director, has had her baby this week. Baby Millie has come.、Uh, she's healthy. She's so cute.、Uh, the family's doing fantastic, and so she is out on her maternity leave, and we just celebrate her. We celebrate them and、uh, this healthy baby that's come into our community. She's sent out all the information to you. You, uh, if you're in the kids ministry, to know what to expect and who to contact and how it's going to roll through the summer,、um, and so we just invite you to worship with us as we jump in together today. You want to pray for us as we head into our opening worship? Sure. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the ways that you're at work in our lives, and we just give you this morning, God. I pray that you would speak through the message. God, would you meet us all where we're at this morning? Would we?、Um, Be able to just let go of anything that we've brought with us into this moment, and、um, God, would you just minister to our hearts in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. As a surprise, we brought in a few of the band to join Kiana here in our kitchen as we、um, just worship heading into summer, and as we、uh, just celebrate her and her last day with us on staff, and we send her out. So、uh, join us as we sing.
morning, Redemption. I'm grateful to be worshiping together this morning, and I wanted to bring you a few updates on the work of the people, how we're participating with God's work in the world as we go throughout each week and move forward together. Um, if you're new here, I invite you to connect with us at our webpage, redemptionchurch.org. There's a connect with us page and you can fill out a connect card and I will be able to get you linked in uh, to our updates and how you can be a part of how we're um, operating together as a community. We have been so focused on things um, happening here locally and particularly through our Enough for All Fund in recent days that I wanted to this week shift our attention to some of our global partners. Um, we were able to send funding to three global partners responding to the global pandemic in northern Iraq in refugee camps as well as um, two different ministries in El Salvador. And we got this thank you note um, from community build in El Zonte, El Salvador. And I just wanted to share that with you as a congregation. Dear Regen Redemption Church, thank you so much for continuing to come alongside us as we serve together in El Salvador. We're so encouraged by your partnership, the Mission Sake team. So they are um, working a whole relief system in El Zonte, El Salvador, and we're really grateful that we can be a part of that and continue to cheer them on and how God is moving and working in that community. As we continue on in our worship this morning, I direct your attention to our giving page of redemptionchurch.org. We believe that our giving is a part of our worship and really a response to a God who poured out his life for us. We want to be those that pour out our lives for others. And so I invite you to continue giving tithes and offerings online um, at redemptionchurch.org. And with that, I will send it over to Kiana and Phil as we continue our morning together. We shared with you guys last week um, that Kiana, our worship leader, is going to be stepping off staff. And this is her last Sunday with us. And so we have invited Kiana to join us in the kitchen um, <laughs> as we're um, celebrating her and um, as we're launching her out off the staff team into what God's calling her into next. Um, last week, we got to hear from Kiana um, on just how God's been speaking and um, where God's leading her next vocationally. Um, and this week, we're just, we're, we're just here to celebrate her and to, to send her out with all the love um, that we have. And so we're just so thankful for you, Kiana. We're so thankful for everything that you have given and all the ways you've served and loved our church and our community and just to tell you that you, you're going to be so missed. Um, yes, yeah, so we celebrate you today. Thank you. Um, I've like, been crying for a while. Mm -hmm. um, though I know, I, I know that I know that I know God is in this and he's spoken in such clear ways and I'm so excited for whatever's next. Um, I'm still really sad and I really, really love this church and I love you guys. It has been such an honor and just a gift to be able to sing with you each Sunday and worship God together. And um, if I could just say one thing, which is be to never stop singing to him. Uh, never stop worshiping because that's where you're going to find out who God is and find out who you are. And um, I know that even if it's in heaven, um, this isn't the end. We're all going to be singing together again one day and I'm gonna miss you guys. I love you guys so much and I'm really gonna miss you guys and I know that we're still gonna see each other and be friends but it's just, I can't even look at you. I'm just really sad. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Yeah, we were just saying it's really weird that we can't hug. You know? <laughs> it's like the really hard. Um, but we just, we love you and we love you and Ben and just who you are and you guys have been such a gift to our community, such a gift to us. Um, you are just like a bright light in this world. And so um, thank you for all that you've been to this community. Thank you for the ways that you've led um, people closer to the Lord through the worship, through leading the team, um, and the ways that you've spoken prophetically over our community, the ways that you have just um, served so beautifully um, for so long and so faithfully. And we just, we just thank you. And we're going to miss you on staff. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to, you know, still be like in relationship, but it's, we're, we're just really going to miss your, your brightness around. So um, we're going to pray for her right now. God, I thank you for, um, for Kiana and for Ben and um, for who they are. God, I thank you for the ways that you um, have just 
so bless our community um, with Kiana and who she is and the ways that she has served and loved this community and um, just just been such a gift, God, and leading us through into your presence in worship and um, the ways that she has called us into more. And God, I pray that you would just bless Ben and Kiana as they step out into this next season. God, would you just um, continue to just shine so brightly um, through them? And um, yeah, we just, we just pour out, God, all of our love on them. God, I pray that they would just feel that as they're stepping out, just... Um, God, your love, um, your peace, and um, and God, I just pray that they would just know um, and be able to just see the ways that you are at work, um, the ways that you've been at work. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And we're sad, obviously, but we're also really excited for you as God's calling you to what's next. And so we celebrate you, and we, we launch you out. Thank you. Yeah. So... Uh, we're going to continue to worship as a community, and we're going to have um, a community group break down and read from the scripture for us this morning. John 15, 1 through 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that lay down his life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. My friends tease me and they call me a YouTuber. Um, okay, I'll take it. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube now that we're at stay at home and uh, stumbled into this really killer YouTube channel called This Is Living. And it follows Koa Rothman, a professional surfer on the North Shore. And he recently put out this episode that was wild. He took off on a huge wave of pipeline and got obliterated almost died, gets washed in, and he's just sort of like limping up the beach and they show up with a camera and they like, how are you doing? What's going on? And you get this from him. Dude, I don't know how my board survived that wave. I like literally thought it was broken 100%, thought I was broken. I just remember like taking off in the whitewash, it was super violent, I like barely got to my feet and like couldn't set my rail. And like by the time I got to the bottom, I was like ready to do, do my bottom turn, I was like, super off balance. I like looked up to see where the lip was. I was like, oh my God. I was like, get away from me. I went like this and just like was about to fall back. And I just, I went for a very weak jump, but I like kicked like this. And somehow like, I don't think I got it as bad as I should have got it. Cause like, it looks like the lip landed on me, but it didn't feel like that. And I didn't get the wind knocked out of me or anything, but it was just so violent, so violent. My neck, I don't, now it makes sense why I'm back here, right here. It feels like there is a serious like knot in there. Go reset, get the mojo back, try to stay positive and Definitely don't do that again. 
but you just sometimes it doesn't go your way. Sometimes it does go your way. That's a it's a part of the game here surfing. Especially out at pipeline. It can go your not your way for a long time. But when it does go your way, it makes up for everything. So there is there is a there is a reason we do it. I think the good outweighs the bad. But sometimes the bad is just so bad. Makes you really question if it actually is worth it. Just put yourself in those situations. I, right now, I don't know. But if you were to talk to me the other day when I got my good wave, I'd say for sure. <laughs> It's all just a mindset, really. It's time to go reset, get pumped up. Hopefully it gets better, get back out there. I've watched that video like 15 times this week. <laughs> just that speech that he gave right there. Oh, it's so good. He, like this guy almost dies. He just gets, gets crushed and he doesn't even understand how he made it out. He's clearly spun out and he's not going back out. And he's like, just gotta go home. Got to reset, get some more coffee, find my mojo, and get back out there. I, said, I love that. I love it. It's perspective. He says it's all just a mindset. It's perspective. It's all perspective is everything. Perspective is everything. That's how he keeps going out day after day, whether he gets blown up or not. Um, we're, we're spending a month. Um, here in May, talking about relationships, relational health and wholeness, and we're um, working through the teachings of Jesus and the life of Jesus. We're hearing from therapists on best practices in relational health and wholeness. We're, we're doing some spiritual practices through journaling um, and, and other things at home together. And, and this week, I want to talk about perspective in our relationships, the ability to withdraw in order to fully enter in, in order to fully show up to our relationships and to our life, really. Now, a community group in our church just read to us from John 15, the first 15 verses. Uh, and I love this passage. It talks about abiding. Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you, which abide is an old word. It, it just means spend time in my presence, show up, be together, withdraw to create a quiet space to be in the presence of the living God. And he says, when you do, I will abide in you, I'll fill you and there'll be an overflow. There will be an incredible fruit that comes out of you. Now what's interesting is at the end of this passage, around 15 verses later somewhere, Jesus gives this great command, love each other in the same way that I've loved you. And he says, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. I mean, this is the ultimate call of what love and relationships is. It's a full self-giving love lay it all down. And we've talked about all these one another passages over the weeks of mutual submission, mutual love, like forgiving, just a constant build others up above yourself and lay it down. Um, man, but that's a hard thing to do. But, but notice where that comes in the passage. So that's a hard thing to sustain throughout your life. Like what, the, to muster up that kind of, I'm just going to give it all away energy all the time. Um, where does that come in the passage, it, it, I mean, it comes way, way, way later. I know for me, the way that I'm wired is often things can build up and I can start with this like, okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna lay it all down today and I'll let like as things come at me or things get more anxious or things get stressful or things get tense, um, I'll, I'll like let it build up internally and not say anything until it hits this tipping point and then I'll just kind of explode in frustration and I'll be so frustrated that I've lost perspective and I don't, like how did I lose that? Because I started with it and it was so good. Um, but there's this invitation, he says, to abide. Like that, that lay your life down for the other actually comes at the end. It comes after you've figured out how to abide in the presence of God and it says that there will be a great overflow. That's where the overflow comes from. He says, remain in me and I'll remain in you. There's this promise of intimacy. Jesus calls us his friend. He's like, like come be in my presence like you would be with a close friend. Or he says, if you wanna bear life, or if, if you wanna bear fruit in this kingdom, that only comes from him. It only comes being connected to him. It's actually like a, an overflow. I have this tree in my backyard and the tree, um, is an orange tree, and, and recently it had so many oranges on it, it got so full 
um, that this whole part of the tree actually like tipped over and was laying on the grass. Like there was so much fruit it was on the ground and I had to go out and cut all the oranges off so that the tree would snap up and not snap off this limb. And the reality is, uh, that tree didn't like muster up those oranges. It just is what happened because it's planted in some good soil. It's got a lot of water on it and the sun is shining and it, it just was rooted in all of these elements and that's the, the fruit that came out of it. And that's like the picture that I have of what he's describing is like, we're almost like if we're rooted in him, if we're in his presence, if we're withdrawn to be with him, the perspective that comes, it's almost like we're overflowing, like way down with so much fruit. We just got to give it away. It's, it's like too much. And I think that's the invitation. That's what perspective is. Luke 5, 16 says um, that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places to pray. Perspective in relationships is the ability to withdraw to the quiet places, to withdraw to the quiet practices of being in the presence of the Spirit so that you can more fully and completely show up and enter into your life and into your relationships. But the thing is when things get overwhelming and when things get complicated and when things get anxious, when things get crazy and when there's too much coming at you and there's too much to do, what we often do is cut off the things that give us life first. So we can do more work. That, that's what I do all the time. I operate in this sense where I, I will cut off the things that give me the most life when I feel like there's so much extra work that I have to do and that I have to be about. Um, and, and I know that like, uh, like a walk that I would be on or um, but, but like a prayer walk in the morning or, or sort of getting away, like waking up super early in the morning to be in the presence of God so that I can be filled and ready when everyone else wakes up so that I can fully show up to everything that's going to happen. I mean, I cut that stuff off because I'm like, oh, I'll get up early and work more so that I can actually get more work done. Um, in, in, in perspective in our relationships, when it comes to health and wholeness, it actually comes from the opposite, from, from getting away, which can feel quite counterintuitive. It can feel quite like, like, like am I'm escaping things. I'm being selfish by having this space of, of, of finding perspective in the presence of God, but it's actually quite the opposite. Like that is the work. Like entering the presence of God to see and to, to hear more fully and to be clear and to be centered and to be filled so that you know what to do and how to engage. Um, that, man, that only comes from being in his presence. There's a story of John Wesley, um, famous Christian leader, led huge inner, inner gosh, continental movement um, in the church. And, and they said that he prayed four hours a day. He would get up every morning at 4 a.m. and he'd pray till eight. And he said that the more the work grew, the more he realizes he needed to spend time in the presence of the spirit so that he could more fully show up to the work that he had to do because he just couldn't do it on his own. It was just too overwhelming. They said by the end of his life, he, could, he, he was praying up to eight hours a day. And he got to the point where, in like a silly way, he said, I, I don't, um, he says, I, I think very little of a man that won't pray four hours a day. <laughs> uh, it was just so normal for him. Perspective is withdrawing in order to fully show up, to spend time in the presence of God, to spend time with the Spirit so that you can be filled, so that you can be inspired, so that you can be renewed and reminded and aligned and centered so that you can actually show up with all you've got, so that you can be full and overflowing. <laughs> it's like what Koa said, you got to go home, reset, get some more coffee, find your mojo and get back out there. So what spiritual practices of perspective do you practice? What, what about right now in this time in this stay at home reality? What, what spiritual practices are you practicing? How do you withdraw in the spirit so that you can show up more fully? What have you let go of in your life that you used to practice? Maybe it's because of this quarantine time or maybe just it, it isn't. Maybe it just happened that you need to pick back up obviously in a quarantine appropriate way. Or maybe what new practices can you try, can you step into? The invitation, guys, is to abide. That's our invitation to be in his presence and let him fill us so that we can more fully enter in. And so in that light, I've invited Courtney Harrell, who's an elder, worship leader in our church, also a therapist, um, to jump into an interview on Zoom um, so we can hear some of her um, sort of expert advice and wisdom on best practices for health and wholeness when it comes to perspective. Everybody, welcome Courtney Harrell to our um, Sunday service. I mean, I, I want to introduce her, but man, she obviously needs no introduction. Uh, 
she is an elder in our church. Uh, she is a leader on our worship team. Um, she's also uh, a mama. She is a wife and she is a therapist. She works as a marriage family therapist. And so we are inviting you to join us um, just from that therapist perspective, um, helping us step into relational health and wholeness. And as we're talking about this the spiritual practice of withdrawal in order to find perspective to better engage our relationships. Um, obviously it's a spiritual practice, but um, it's also like a deeply rooted, just uh, well-being practice that, that I know often mm -hmm. gets talked about in psychological circles. Could you, as a therapist from that perspective, could you give us just some best practices and tools for withdrawing in order to better engage in our relationships? Yeah, so first I wanna say, I feel like there might be two groups of people out there some that have heard these things before because um, lots of people are talking about them, mm -hmm. but also those that haven't. So just keep your ears open and hopefully you can hear some of these and get something from them. So the clients that I see in my office are who are growing and changing and transforming are applying one or more of these practices that I'm going to mention to you today. So they're really powerful stuff. They build self-awareness and um, they really are a catalyst for growth in your life. So number one is journaling. You guys have definitely heard about journaling. We've talked about in our church. I'm so grateful we have been talking about it in our church. Um, journaling thoughts, feelings, unconscious things that just come up. Um, I want to say a note on this, that feeling thoughts are not who you are. I find that in my practice, a lot of people identify with their feeling. Um, oh, I'm anxious. I'm an anxious person. I'm depressed. Oh, I'm a depressed person. So the point of journaling is to create some distance from the feeling or the thought and um, to know that it's not you, not who you are. So that on journaling. Um, another one is walk, being out in nature, noticing birds, noticing flowers, um, being present in your steps, not thinking forward or behind about your day, but staying in line with your walk and looking around you. Um, another one is meditation. Um, listening to meditation um, and also I kind of put this in with presence um, same thing as being present to yourself and um, that can be listening to scripture or a prayer or anything like that um, another one I, I have a lot of my clients practice some come into our Christians some are not but a releasing prayer um, mm -hmm. a couple times of the day um, something that keeps coming back to them keeps coming back and so they continuously notice it, release it up to God, uh, or just release it because it's something they can't control and they can't keep holding. Um, another one is exercise. So this is more about like body. So breath work is in this exercise, embodiment, dance, movement. So this is noticing what does my body feel right now? What is it experiencing? And letting that out in some way. Um, it's really important to notice like, oh, I'm tense in my neck. Oh, I, I feel anxious in my stomach. And, and um, to do some movement through the, those things. And another one is therapy. Um, therapy is a deeper processing of feelings that can be confusing um, or that you're stuck in. And that's mm. a really good withdrawal thing to do. And if these other things aren't working, then therapy can be a great tool as well. I believe that um, there's a deep why to all these tools. Um, I think that the why is the fruits of the spirit which are joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, uh, faithfulness, all of those things. I think that the tools without the why are short-lived. They don't last long. And I think that the why without the tools are really just a good idea. Like, yeah, sure, I'd love to be patient. But if we're not practicing how to do that, it's not going to happen. Um, it may seem simple. Um, these practices may seem simple. But I challenge you to ask yourself, if I'm not doing them, why am I not doing them? What is keeping you from practicing them? Um, if you've tried them before, maybe, and they haven't worked, I would just say try a different one. Yeah. I guarantee you'll find one that fits with who you are and your personality and just try the next one. Keep trying. I love that. <laughs> um, that's yeah. Really, that's wisdom. Just keep trying until you find one that fits with where you're at. Yeah. I, I have it with clients all the time. Like, oh, I didn't like that one. That's all right. Let's do something else then. Um, yeah. And then I really believe that there is a much more beautiful world available to us if we can step into these practices mm -hmm. and then into our relationships. Um, we can be people that step into these difficult, hard places and challenging places and then go offer ourselves to the world because we're mm -hmm. first withdrawing and um, 
you know, recognizing that place of God. And we can be different in this world. We can be a presence that's not polarizing or this, that, or um, anything that divides, but instead a people that bring acceptance and love and grace and create space for others. And we're not going to be able to bring that for others if we're not first doing that with yeah. ourselves and with God. So, yeah, those are some of my thoughts on that. I love that. That's really helpful. Okay, last question. Yeah. A little bit of a shift. Um, you and Aaron mm-hmm. serve as elders on our elder team at the church. Um, so it's kind of pivoting a little bit from like a, uh, asking you as like a specialist in terms of like a therapist, but like as like a spiritual practice. And we talk about withdrawal and order to better. And do, yeah. like what, what spiritual practices do you guys practice that are just giving you life right now in this season of mm-hmm. stay at home? And like it, it's in, in terms of withdrawing to be in the presence of God so you can better show up yeah. in relationships and kind of better show up in the day. Like what, what are you guys doing that's giving life right now? Yeah. Well, I'm going to speak more to myself. I, Aaron is a little bit, but, um, so for me, what I do daily, this, so I have a couple of, I'm going to tell you a lot of things that I do. I don't do all of them every single day. Um, but I do a 30 minute walk almost every single day and I'm very intentional with that walk. Um, sometimes I listen to music, which speaks truth and hope and that I'm enough and things that I need to hear. I need to remember who mm. God says that I am. So yeah. I will do that in that time. Sometimes I'll listen to meditation. Um, sometimes I'll be in silence and know that I just need to be in this moment and notice the things around me. So tying into all the things I was sharing with you guys up there, I am doing these things in a bunch of different kind mm. of ways. Um, uh, so I notice birds. I notice flowers. I do all those things. Um, another one is Sometimes I do a scripture in the morning. I read a scripture. I've got a two and a four year old, so I can't do more than five minutes. They are on my lap. They are totally <laughs> not letting me. They want more food. Um, so I usually do that like for five minutes. I will read a scripture. Sometimes I'll just do a journal. I do one or the other. Mm. Um, another thing for me is playing music. I really feel connected to God when I, and also like present to the moment when I'm just playing I play out my emotions I play out a prayer or something that I feel like God is saying to me sometimes mm-hmm. it's a worship song that I you know I'm just playing so those are moments that sometimes I'll put on a show for the kids and I'll go and do that because I'm like I need some of this space to remind me who I am in order to then go be a better mom because I don't want to lose it on my kids today and mm-hmm. I feel lonely today so how am I gonna you know connect with God who says who I am because I'm mm. feeling these other things. Um, so those are some of the things that I do. And then Aaron and I together over this last year and a half have developed like a Sabbath practice that we do. And we shut down all technology, all media from Friday night to Saturday night. And we um, hone in on the voices that we want to be heard. And that is God's voice and then each other's voices and our kids' voices. and we just spend intentional time being grateful and acknowledging what we have and um, being really present to one another. And it's been really hard in this season, I will say. It's it's kind of morphed in ways. Aaron and I now kind of treat it as a date night. So him and I connect specifically. We will turn on a show for the kids that we can have dinner, you know, order out, you know, get some things sit outside in our backyard um, and still have like a connection space. And then we let that go into the morning and into the afternoon, do breakfast with the kids and just stay present to one another in that. And Aaron also does walks um, at work and he does an active, like non-productive walk. So it's not a walk to go think about all the things I need to do, but it's almost smack dab in the middle of the production. No, I need to just go be, you mm. know, and let myself go be. And so he, he does that or ha- had been doing that at work before COVID things are going to shift it. So yeah, those are some practices that, that we do. Oh, and then one more thing, actually. We have recognized, especially in this COVID season, but before, um, we try to give each other space individually mm. to go away from our responsibilities as a parent, as a caregiver, as a, you know, work and responsibility, you know, making money. And we are like, hey, go be by yourself. Go, you know, do social distance with a friend, whatever. It's something that we we have been trying to be really more intense, more intentional about. Mm. That's so, really cool. Yeah. So helpful. All of it. So helpful. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and for You're welcome. sharing and 
not only from your sort of expert perspective as a therapist, but also your your own life experience. It's so helpful. So appreciate you and You're so welcome. Love it. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Love this community so much. I mean, it's where we're at, who we call home, and we love you all. And yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, that was great. I love Courtney. I love what she brings. I love her perspective on spiritual practices of withdrawal, but also um, just like a therapist perspective on, on those six practices. I just encourage you to do those things. Step into them. We'll send you some resources um, and a list of the things that she described in our email tomorrow, the equipping email. But now I want to give you a spiritual practice. We've done it each week, and up to this point, it's all been journaling this month. But uh, this time I want to step out of the journal, and I actually want to step out of the house, and I want to invite you to a prayer walk each day, just the spiritual practice of the withdrawal of a prayer walk. Go as long as you can, 10, 15, even 30 minutes. Um, do the breathing exercises we've been talking about, the centering breathing. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth um, several times. Ask God's Spirit to meet you there and just walk and pray. And maybe that means you're just going to unload what's on your heart to God, or maybe it just means you're going to listen and be present to the Spirit of God and allow God to speak and remind you of who you are um, and who's calling you to be. Maybe it's an awe walk, which is, is like, maybe you need to like release all the stuff you got going and just be reminded of the awe and wonder of God and the world around you um, to find a fresh sense of perspective. But I encourage you to do that every day for at least 15 minutes. Um, and let's see how God meets us and speaks with us to give us perspective as we withdraw so that we can more fully enter in. So we're going to continue in a time of worship with uh, the worship band again. So I invite you to continue with us as we sing.
Thanks so much for joining us this morning. I hope you guys have a great week. Yeah, we just want to speak a benediction over you as we come to the close of our service together. Just a blessing and uh, pray for us as we head into the rest of our Memorial Day weekend, the beginning of our summer. Um, may you be a community that continues to find the open spaces in God's spirit. May you continue to be a community that finds perspective as you find rest and space in the presence of God so that you can more fully engage uh, the relationships of those that he's put into your life. And so let me pray for us. Father, I pray that you would just continue to meet us, Father. I pray that you would continue to guide us in this time. I pray that you'd meet us in our homes, and I pray that you would give us the ability to find the open spaces and to find the rhythms and the, the practices that would give us the space just to sit in your presence to find the perspective that only you bring, Father. I pray that you'd bring us rest. I pray that you'd bring us joy. I pray that you would bring us uh, a great sense of life and that you would guide us so that we can fully engage all the people, all the friends, all the family, all the relationships that you've put into our lives, Lord. So lead us and guide us. Continue to meet us uh, exactly where we are. We give it all to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Have a fantastic week. See you next week. <laughs>